It's a special edition of HN Live today, previewing the Alberta Junior Hockey League semifinal. I'm Sean Mullen, along with Dave Dawson. And on the program today, we'll be joined by the head coach of the Drumheller Dragons, Kevin Hasselberg, whose team takes on the Calgary Canucks in one semifinal. Sean Martin, head coach and general manager of the Whitecourt Wolverines, will be facing off the, against the Canmore Eagles in the other semifinal. And Dave, that matchup is uh, particularly interesting to me as Canmore pulled off a big upset in that last round. We didn't expect to see them here, but it's that time of the year. The team can get hot at the right time. It's an older team. And now they get an opportunity to test what has been uh, the top team in the Alberta Junior Hockey League, certainly since the realignment. Could get any better. Uh, the idea for the interlock schedule this year is so hoping for unconventional matchups through the playoffs. And uh, Canmore and Whitecourt is going to be an exciting one. Obviously, Andrew Milne, the head coach in uh, Canmore, has been a well-respected coach for years. Just hasn't been able to get over the hump, so to speak, in the playoffs. And now has his group in the semifinals up against the Whitecourt Wolverines. And yeah, Canmore, the opening round, the highest scoring team in the AJHL, the Lloydminster Bobcats. Uh, took them uh, took them down in the opening round in six games, and now you get the top team in the league, the White Court Wolverines. So exciting! Excited to preview that one. And the White Court has taken three of the four games this year in the season series. But as you're going to hear, I imagine in this interview uh, throughout this show, playoffs are a different animal as they always are. Absolutely, the White Court Wolverines coming off a four-one victory in their last series against the Camrose Kodiaks. Now preparing to see if. They can ride the momentum they've had all throughout the second half of the season into a league final. And to preview the semifinal series with White Court and Canmore, now joined by the head coach and general manager, he is Sean Martin. Uh, Sean, thanks so much for making time for us today. Uh, has to be some excitement brewing in White Court for statistically the best season you guys have had since making AJHL finals. What's the season been like for your group? Yeah, uh, obviously it's been a, a tale of two seasons. Um, you know, we didn't have the start that we wanted and, uh, you know, we were able to come out of it. And had a good run here in the middle middle half and towards the end and, uh, you know, uh, you know, a successful first round against Camrose and now we're, we're looking forward to Camor. What was some of the, the things that led to the turnaround for you guys? You know, uh, what did you see? What changes did you see in your team as you made those improvements halfway through the season and carried those on? Well, it was actually a game in Canmore, um, and it was uh, it was just a, it was having a real conversation with our hockey team that you know we had a lot of guys that weren't uh, you know weren't realizing their potential. We set off season goals with with the guys, and they weren't they were hitting those numbers. So we had that conversation before the game, and uh, we we kind of uh, we went into Canmore and and put up seven and, and had a big win, and you know from there that was kind of where everything started to turn. You guys took three of the four games uh, from Canmore this season, uh, two of them earlier in the year. Um, obviously, they're I don't know, a bit of a surprising team, so to speak, the way they've been able to have their way so far in the playoffs. So what do you like or what are you aware of and how you match up against them? Well, they're old. Um, you know, I haven't done the numbers, but I was going through their roster, and that's probably got to be the oldest team that's out there. So, um, when you're playing veteran laden teams, you know, you can never overlook them. And, uh, you know, Andrew's a good coach, he's been around for a long time. So, uh, they're definitely a team that we need to be, be aware of, and we have to be ready from, from the drop of the puck here in game one. Obviously, your scoring has been pretty balanced so far in the playoffs uh, 11 players with three points or more, six with uh, four points or more. So you haven't really leaned on one line or another. How key is that to the success you guys have had and will need to have going forward? Yeah, it's it's obviously, you know, something that we've always, you know, since I've taken over here is we've, you know, want to be a very, a team that's very deep. Um, and that's not just up front, but on the back end as well. And, uh, you know, I think if you look at our minutes, our, our defensemen can get spread out pretty good. And then up front, uh, we do have the ability to run four lines. And, uh, you know, we've been able to use both goalies so far in the playoffs as well. So, uh, you know, it's something that, that, you know, I believe in. And it's kind of our team is that we you know, next guy up is going to get the job done for us. Next guy up has kind of been a situation for your goaltending. A bit of a scary uh, injury there earlier on. How, 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 comfort how comfortable do you feel about what's going on between the pipes right now? Yeah, you know, anytime that you, you know, you lose the the, the league's best goalie, um, you know, which Ben was and, and got the award, that was uh, something that we 
you know, it was concerning, but luckily we, uh, you know, we did have Lucas here, who's who's a veteran goalie, is with his time in the BCHL, and then uh, we were also able to uh, bring Nick Avakian in uh, from Portland here, kind of right around the trade deadline. So, so we were lucky that we kind of covered our bases, and um, you know, I think you know probably a reason we did that is we went through. <laughs> you know eight goalies last year and uh you know so this year when when a team reached out and said you know we might have an open guy you know i would have been dumb not to do it and, and so we're, we're very happy with how nick's come along and you know he was a big reason that we won that first round well he had a great great series numbers wise how has he adjusted to your team and to playing in this league I think it's, it's been a huge adjustment for him on a lot of levels. Like he's, he's a California kid. He played in tri cities. He played in Portland. He's never played in Canada. Uh, so white courts about as Canadian prairie <laughs> as you're going to get. And I, I think when he first got here, there was a little bit of an adjustment and obviously the games play a little bit different, but uh, he's been very good for us. He's been a good teammate. Uh, him and Lucas have both been kind of helping each other out. And um, you know, like I said, whoever's in that, we got a lot of confidence. You're, you're playing a team that, you know, is coming off a big upset that is playing when you're playing the best hockey of the year for them right now and, and maybe different than what was expected from them. Uh, it's playoffs. It's the semifinals. So you don't really need extra motivation, but you have to lean into your players a little bit to remind them, hey, you know, you have to play Canmore like this is uh, any other top team. Oh, yeah, I think at this time of year, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You have to be prepared. Everyone's going to be hungry. Like I said, they are uh, an old team, so you know that they're going to be battle-weary and they're going to be coming in hot. And You know, some of the games that we have played with them this year, you know, with us playing them four times instead of two, uh, there is a little bit of a rivalry there. And, um, you know, there's no doubt a couple of the games we – we fed them their lunch pretty good. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to be coming in here hot and on ready to go. And, you know, you know, I don't know what the numbers are, but we've been very good at home this year. And, you know, our, our goal is to, to make sure right from the drop of the puck that they know they're going to be in a tough game. Well, Sean, really appreciate you joining us today and uh, best of luck in this series. And uh, hopefully for your sake, get back to the finals again. Perfect. Thanks, Dave. That's Sean Martin, head coach and general manager of the White Court Wolverines. And what an opportunity for them, Dave. You know, they didn't get off to the start they wanted. They were kind of hovering for a while. Then not only did they get going, but then the realignment happened. The opportunities have opened up here in the Alberta Junior Hockey League. And the door is wide open for White Court. But they cannot take a uh, Canmore team that pulled off an upset in the last round at all lightly going into this series. Yeah, and if, if you've ever watched uh, White Court Wolverines hockey before, they play with pace, they play with tempo, they play with physicality, and I imagine that those would be some of the factors they'll ride into their series against Canmore. But Canmore will be coming back and pushing hard. It'll be a fun one to watch. The other semifinal sees the Calgary Canucks taking on the Drumheller Dragons. The Canucks, a 4-2 series victory over the Grand Prairie Storm. Dave, in, in a series that started with the home team winning every game, but the Canucks were able to close things out with a big win on the road on Sunday. Yeah, it's kind of been indicative of the Calgary Canucks season this year. You look at some games that they do really well. You know, they shut out. Uh, they had a couple of shutouts earlier in the year against powerhouse teams, and then they come back and they struggle in a few different games. But I uh, really love the direction that Brad Moran has been able to go with his program. He's got some veteran leadership there, and and I think it's a great opportunity for them. Uh, their last championship was in 1999. Three of the four teams heading into the AJHL semifinals this year, have never won a championship. So for Calgary and Drumheller, Drumheller's taken three of the four meetings this season, and they've all primarily been in the back half of the schedule. So I can't wait to watch this one. It's going to be a fun series. And Drumheller, red hot in the playoffs so far, winning all four of their games in a series against Bonneville. And I know they were close games. It was a hard-fought series, but they got the sweep. They're getting scoring all throughout their lineup. And they kind of limped into the end of the regular season, but have, have sure come out firing here in the playoffs. Yeah, three one-goal games in that series. So, you know, when it comes to the rivalry, I guess in, you know, the, the day and age of the AJHL, when it was South Division, they play each other a whole heck of a lot. They have that animosity. Can't wait to see these two guys uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the playoffs. And to preview the series, joined by the head coach and general manager of the Drumheller Dragons, and I've mentioned a number of platforms before, one of my favorite interviews in junior A hockey. Uh, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us today. Your Dragons have a chance in this series up against Calgary to hit the AJHL Finals for the first time in 10 years. Uh, just walk us through what's the season been like for your group. 
Oh, wow. We never really thought about it that way. So thanks for that uh, uh, intro. I really appreciate it. And, and I also enjoy the interviews that we've had in the past. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, but you can you can make an argument for both teams uh, being in this situation. It's a unique season that that has uh, provided teams with that that opportunity. So um you know, I, I don't know if we're so much focused as to where it might lead to. I think that's for the fans and and everybody else to navigate through in the social media platforms for us. Uh, you know, we're grateful that we have the opportunity to be in this situation. And, you know, we're pretty focused and, and dialed in to, to just our preparation and getting ready for game one on Friday. Yeah, you've had uh, a great season series of Calgary so far, taking three or four uh, games from them. And uh, even recent in February, you played them three times. Does that in any sense kind of give you a bit of a different scouting report, maybe as to a team you might not have played as much more in the earlier part of the season? I think you can lean on that maybe for, for tendencies and whatnot, but playoffs is a whole different ball game. And, and you would have seen that in our series with Bonneville and Calgary series with Grand Prairie. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of highs and lows and it's about managing the, uh, you know, the emotional aspect of the game and, and teams peak at different times and teams ride confidence waves. And so I, you know, I think more than anything, it's just really important that, that the players maintain a level of composure and, and, uh, you know, that circulates from the staff as well. And uh, I keep saying this to, to all of our recruits as well. Like, you just got to enjoy the moment and, and have fun with it. And fortunately, in, the, in round one for us, we had a lot of pretty significant moments in that series, which, you know, on paper was a, a four to nothing series win for us. But anybody watching that series knows that uh, it was a much closer series than four nothing. That said, though, you found ways to win each game, and you talked about riding waves of confidence and peaking at the right time of the year. When you're finding ways to win in the playoffs consistently like you did in that series, you know, what are some positive traits you take out of your success there that you hope to carry over to this one with Calgary? I, I think that uh, you know players that, that faced a lot of adversity all season long and, and went through significant struggles to – to get to that position in, in time of the year, um, they really drew on those past experiences. And, and from that, they, they put a different outcome together than what we had in the past leading up to the playoffs. We, you know, we didn't win a lot of those hockey games, those one goal hockey games. We didn't score a lot of goals in the last minute when we were down um, going into uh, the end of the third period. So, you know, and, and look at our overtime record all season long or shootout record, you know, it, it wasn't very favorable. So, you know, part of it is just growing through your experiences and, and not beating yourself up uh, when you're doing it. And I think at times all year, every team would say this, that they beat themselves up more than they probably should. And, and that's why I say, and like the playoffs is all a whole new, you know, ball game now. And, and uh, you really just have to manage you know, how you approach the game and how you approach situations in the game and just not getting too high and, and nor getting too low when things get a little rough. Well, uh, Kevin, you've always been able to have guys who've been able to step up in key moments. Uh, Coy Piggin is one guy who is uh, drawing some international attention as well. Uh, well, why don't we even just start there? And um, he was a great player for you this season. And what's the ceiling for him in the playoffs? Well, he's, I think he's just over a point a game. He's got five five points in four games for us, and and it was a line that that never played together all season long. We put that line together for the playoffs, and and uh, I think we we really utilized our 19 day layoff, uh, you know, to to build some chemistry, to build some uh, camaraderie uh, amongst our group. Who you know, going into the playoffs, we. You know, we came in 0-5 in our, in our final five games of the season. So uh, with Coy, you know, he's a player that faced a lot of adversity all season long, self-inflicted, uh, you know, punishment amongst himself, being so hard on himself. So, you know, in that final game four, you know, he scored two really big goals in that hockey game, um, the other being in overtime. And, you know, I think that was just an accumulation of a lot of hard days and, 
and struggles that that finally got put to the light for him. And I was going to ask, you know, I asked this as well when it came to white court, but when you look at the success you've had in the playoffs so far, 10 of your players have three points or better in those four games. And as much as, you know, we can focus on individuals, you need depth to succeed in the playoffs. And how much did that play a key in the first round? And how much is that going to have to stay the same way as you carry on in the playoffs? Yeah, I think it, it was a big part of that series. You know, Bonneville was missing a couple players and, and had affiliates in the lineup and really had to lean on their, you know, their key guys um, who took on a lot of minutes for them. And, you know, we've, we've always been a team that's, that's relied on depth and have played all of our players and in, in as many situations as possible. So, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you get contributions from, from unlikely sources and, and unlikely situations. And, and we were very fortunate that, uh, you know, everybody contributed from our goaltenders to, you know, all the defensemen in the lineup. And, you know, we never made any changes through that whole series. And, and we just kept rolling our lines and, and, uh, you know, guys, every time they came up to the gate, were excited to get on the ice. And I think that's half the battle is just having players that want to be out there that want to contribute. You're getting great contributions out of, uh, out of Aiden Peters so far in the playoff series as, you know, a guy who played for the Calgary Canucks in the early portion of the year. Does it give a little bit of extra sense of excitement or energy for a guy to go play up against his old team and a chance to make it to the finals? Yeah, I, I think you'd have to ask Aiden that question. Um, you know, everybody's got a story and, and Aiden's no different. And I think Aiden's, you know, he's uh, he's really developed his game over the course of the season. And, you know, he's he's a young man that's that's got a lot of self-belief uh, in what he's capable of doing. He plays the game in a unique way and, and he just needed to find his stride. And, and I think in that first playoff series, you know, he's, He's just a great teammate. He's always positive on the bench, cheering on his guys, and you know he gets involved. He's a very intelligent player uh, in a lot of the right spaces on the ice, and and like I said before, it's just how he conducts himself and how professional he is, and saying the right things. So I don't know. I'm sure in the back of his mind, playing his former team it might circulate in there, but I think for us, it's just go out there, be yourself, have fun, play your game, and. Uh, you know, just keep rolling the way it has been. Just a, a final one for me and, and real basic. I mean, just looking at the matchup with Calgary, as Dave mentioned earlier in our conversation, you played them a number of times. So you got to know them pretty well and certainly teams change at this time of the year. Are there some things that come to mind for you as, as keys to this series, things that are really going to be difference makers between the two clubs? I think in any playoff series, it's, you know, a team that, that's playing loose, that's, uh, you know, you play – what 57 games you play 57 games to prepare yourselves for uh these games um and i just think that the the teams that have put the effort in to to be prepared are the ones that that keep moving forward um and when you look at both teams you know and you break down how calgary played in that grand prairie season and you know how they've really changed their culture and and change their team to get ready for the playoffs so like that's a team that's firing on all cylinders right now and you know our our journey and our path has been a little bit different than theirs and you know we're finding the success that we knew we had or we were capable of having in the playoffs now so i, I just think that two teams are are going to go head to head now and and we're going to navigate through this and do the best we can as a staff to, to make sure our teams are prepared one game at a time and you know, I, I think the players are the ones that are going to ultimately will not think the players will be the ones that that decide the outcome of the series. And I know we're extremely confident in our guys, just like Calgary will be in theirs. Kevin, appreciate your time. Thanks so much. And uh, I know through the uh, the Internet does uh, bumpiness in your busy schedule. Appreciate you being able to catch up. Yeah. Uh, no kidding. You guys have a great day and uh, look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thank you. Good luck in the series. OK, thank you. Kevin Hasselberg, head coach and general manager of the Drumheller Dragons, who will face the Calgary Canucks in the Alberta Junior Hockey League semifinal. And we've got two terrific matchups, Dave. We knew the playoffs were going to be interesting this year. It's wide open for which team from Alberta will head on to the Centennial Cup, uh, which we get to broadcast as the broadcast partner of Hockey Canada on HockeyCanada.ca. 
Can't wait for that. And there will be a very fine representative from the Alberta Hockey League in there, one of these four teams. Yeah, in Oakville, Ontario, that trip is going to be worth one out there for sure, and it's going to be a dogfight right through. We'll also preview the championship series uh, coming up in the final as well. And along with that, you can catch an interview with the commissioner, Ryan Bartoshik, on HM Live today's episode this week. That's right. Check out all our social media. You're already on it right now, so you can find it. Another episode here from the commissioner, and we're really looking forward to continue our coverage of the Alberta Junior Hockey League playoffs. For Dave Dawson, I'm Sean Mullen. Thanks for the two coaches for joining us as well. Keep enjoying the playoffs. It's the best time of the year on HN Live today.